Good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon. Chris Hart, you uh, you have kind of an uh, unusual responsibility here at the goat farm. We're at the Happy Goat Farm here in Mount Bullion. And uh, what is your job? I am the compost manager at Happy Goat. You're the compost manager. That's correct. And uh, you're going to tell me a little bit about compost, I, I That's hear. right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, compost is uh, plant food uh, fully derived from natural products that we can make here on the farm with various inputs like wood chips and manure and green waste and trimmings and uh, it's it's really interesting stuff we're standing in front of a compost pile now this and the one over there uh, you were telling me a little bit about their shall I say life cycle absolutely life cycle sure so um, whenever we take care of a living thing we're talking plants mostly when we think of compost we think of taking care of plants and all living things need food and shelter and water and compost is part of the way that we provide that for plants uh, the beauty of compost for me is that there's a lot going on there's a lot of variables in making compost, but there's also a lot of really interesting stuff going on biologically. And um, when we mix our compost, our browns and greens and high nitrogens, we're doing that so that we can grow microorganisms that live in the soil. And so the way that compost is plant food is that uh, those organisms provide the nutrition that the plant needs. Um, the beauty is also in the water holding capacity of compost. When we add that to our soil, uh, it'll hold a lot more moisture. Okay. And so we're, we're covering our bases of food and water and shelter for plants. Okay. So, um... The Happy Goat Farm yes. is much more than just a goat farm. That's right. Uh, we just saw a television show about your goats out grazing, uh -huh. doing fire management for yes. property owners around Mariposa. But um, the, uh, the farm part of this is in food production. That's correct. And that's a big part of what's going on here. It's, it's true, yeah. So we are a regenerative farm. And part of being regenerative uh, includes integrating animals, integrating livestock. And it also includes practices like mulching and compost and retaining our crop residue. So you might have noticed in the last couple of weeks that we rolled down our cover crop. Yes. And so that material, that plant material that might normally have been harvested um, or burned in a lot of cases, has been, is now in the process of being incorporated into our soil. And, and so when we lay that down, it creates a mulch and we've already begun to plant our tomatoes and, and vegetables into that mulch that's on top of our soil and um, so in addition to our <coughs> excuse me that mulch is now there we can add our compost and we've created a really nice environment for our plants and for those soil microorganisms that I mentioned and covering all those bases of food water and shelter so can we talk a little more explicitly about the microorganisms absolutely yeah all day uh, so, <laughs> so up until recently, compost has been kind of a mysterious thing because uh, early on we found, and you know, maybe 
your viewers have had this experience. You go in the garden and you're gonna make this compost. And it, it really depends on your recipe. <clears throat> um, suddenly, you know, you, you mix it together and you add water and two days later, it's piping hot and steaming in the middle of November. And you're wondering what, what's going on here. And the heat that you see is generated by microorganisms. And what they're doing is they are um, colonizing and inhabiting the compost pile and they're propagating. And so this is, I'm harping on the food, water, and shelter thing. You're providing all the different types of food that those microorganisms need. The shelter is the physical stuff of the compost itself. And you have to add water because these processes will stop if it gets too dry. So, you know, some compost is really great and you add it to your plants and the plants are happy and other compost is not so good and maybe you don't get as good of a response. And um, so about 30 years ago now, some biologists wanted to get an idea of what is actually going on in compost. And what they found is really good compost has a whole food chain of microorganisms in it. So there's bacteria and there's fungi and there's protozoa and there's nematodes and microarthropods. And these are from the smallest unit of bacteria all the way up to, you know, the creepy crawly soil bugs that we see and also, um, you know, your earthworms and on, on up. The analogy that I really like to use for the soil ecosystem is a coral reef. Because when you get to a microscopic level, the soil is an aquatic environment. And so the microorganisms mostly swim because there's a film of water around the soil particles. And that, that film is called the soil solution, and that's where plants get their, get their nutrition. And the reason that it's like a coral reef is because there's, it's absolutely teeming with life, healthy soil. And just like in a coral reef, if a predator like a shark eats a fish, then all the, the gore goes into the ocean solution and those nutrients become avail available and so the shark eats and all the other little fishes eat and they take advantage of that predation and it's the same the analogy holds for our soil so keep that in mind okay. and so the other thing is that plants don't have a digestion or a digestive system and so the plant sends its roots out into the ground in, to interact with that soil solution and a given plant is at the mercy of the nutritional value of that soil solution and we have tried a chemical approach to make sure that those nutrients are available but it turns out that these organisms are much better at doing that. Um, and they, they also, one of the byproducts of their life cycles is uh, a good structure of soil that has a nice crumb or, um, and can hold a lot of moisture. And it turns out to be really good for plants. Okay. The microorganisms yes. are essential to feeding plants. They are. That's uh, part of the no-till technology that yes, we, it is. you use here at the ranch. That's right. And, um, and can you explain that a little bit for me? I can. So I mentioned the soil, soil solution and that plants lack a digestive system. And so when they put their roots into the soil, they will take advantage of whatever nutrition is in the soil solution. But they can't, a, a plant by itself can't access nutrition from 
the mineral element of the soil. And so you had mentioned adding nitrogen to our soil. And there's this phenomenon that happens where as soon as you add that nitrogen, bacteria eat it because it's a form that they can eat readily. And so immediately you lose a huge fraction of your fertilizer just because it gets incorporated into the bodies of those bacteria. And so the, and it's not in the soil solution at that point either. It's locked up, it's actually in the structure of their bodies. And so to make good on the investment of the nitrogen, you, you need to have a type of organism that will prey on those bacteria and release the nitrogen into the soil solution so that the plants can then have access to it. Okay. Okay, so there's more uh, because there's, there's fungus, beneficial fungus in the soil that interlocks with the plant's roots and the fungal strands are so much finer than a plant root that it can extend much further through soil that a plant root can't. And they have this economy of, of nutrients where the plant is producing sugar from photosynthesis and fungi do have digestive system. It's external. And so they can access the nutrients in the mineral element of soil. And so they have this nice exchange that happens where uh, the fungal strands can reach water deeper than a root can go, or it can access mineral nutrients that a plant can't. And the fungus will transport it to the root interface and trade for photosynthetic sugars. So they have this nice arrangement going. And Symbiotic. Exactly. And so that's one of the key elements of no-till is because it turns out that when we use heavy mechanical treatments on our soil, it breaks up those fungal strands and it halts that economy of, of nutrients between the plant and the fungi. Okay. Very interesting. It's my favorite. Uh, you do more than just play in the dirt, don't you? Um, yes, I ended up it, I ended up at Happy Goat in a rather roundabout way, which uh, I should say that I started out um, on a ranch when I was a kid. And my mother's family was a ranching family, and my dad's family was a fishing family. And so uh, when I was a teenager, I went to Alaska and started commercial fishing. And that's where I learned about salmon ecology. Uh, the interaction between the salmon in a river and all of the other organisms that support the salmon or the plants that benefit from the salmon run and bears and animals and, and the like. And uh, I eventually got into crewing offshore support vessels for uh, remote construction and last mile freight and that sort of thing. Um, and I, was, I began studying soil ecology at that time. And so I'd take care of my duties on the boat. And if we were in transit, I'd have some time to do lessons. Or if the weather was too bad to go out, then I had time to do lessons. And um, I really discovered that this was my passion. And one of my boat captains was giving me a hard time. And he said, man, it's awfully hard to work on soil if you're on a boat. And so I. I thought, yeah, you know, that's, he's giving me a hard time, but there's truth in that. And so I, I started looking for how I could change my, change my occupation. And I was really fortunate to end up here. So it's a good, uh, good relationship. It is. And um, Happy Goat is prospering because of your, your technology and knowledge. And uh, this is becoming a very a productive farm. Absolutely. 
Uh, and we definitely had a similar interest. You know, they wouldn't have been looking for somebody that knew what I know if they weren't up to good stuff. And uh, I'm really happy to be here. So uh, the question that came up in my mind driving over here today, this is kind of cutting edge stuff. Um, we have some college students working out here. Uh, how are they uh, taking this knowledge back to their university? Um, we have, uh, I believe, an animal science major, and we also have a, an agroecology major working here. And um, so in terms of agroecology, the soil ecology meshes right in with that. And in terms of animal science, uh, we can talk about a conversation where the health of the soil correlates to nutrition of plants and nutrition of animals and ultimately nutrition of humans.